Hey folks, Damien here with Southpaw Designs. Uh, I apologize for the uh, casual attire. Um, I kind of got inspired this morning. Uh, Ripley and I are usually, come here girl. Ripley and I are usually up at about 4.30 a.m. And uh, so instead of just sitting here watching TV and starting my day, I decided to go ahead and film a video. I kind of got inspired and I thought we'd take a look at how to find thousands of free fonts for use with your CNC projects. Um, and uh, so if you watch this video, not only are you going to learn how to download and install a boatload of free fonts, uh, you're also going to learn how to actually break them apart, manipulate them so that you can use them within your CNC projects. So with that, uh, stick around and uh, let me know what else you'd like to see. So let's go ahead and di uh, dig, dig right in. All right, so today we're going to take a look at how to work with different types of fonts, more specifically how to get a boatload of free fonts that you can actually use within vCarve. Uh, you can also, I think, do this in Fusion 360. Uh, if memory serves me correctly, I just, I've, I've gotten to the point where I don't use that as much. Uh, vCarve is a really nice program. Uh, so once we get in here, okay, I've, I've gone ahead and put some text on here. And if anybody's done any programming, you know what hello world means. That's the first thing that you ever do when you get into a new uh, software package or you write a program in a new language just to make sure it works. And so I've got my hello world here. Now, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to work with this, uh, but maybe I don't like this font. Maybe I want to find something more decorative. Okay. What I recently realized, and this was just a brain fart on my part, um, is that we have websites like Font Freak and Defont, DA Font, where you can go and you can download fonts. Well, I'm always a little bit hesitant of those because uh, you hit the wrong button and it's download this, download that. I don't want to say they're viruses, but they are just junk programs that you don't need. Uh, and so you know you got to be you got to be wary of those different types of uh, websites where you have free downloads. Um, but uh, we do have Google Fonts, all right. And uh, Google Fonts, if I come back to the home page now. We could have the conversation about whether or not Google Fonts is uh, a reputable company and whether they're taking your information and all that. That's a conversation for a different day, and I could go down that rabbit hole as well. But they do have a lot of great tools, and so that's what we're going to explore today. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look right here. And actually, if you're on YouTube, then guess what? You're using Google, so uh, so there is that. So anyway, uh, but let's uh, let's stay out of that little uh, sewer hit. Uh, and uh, all right, so let's go ahead and get back to what we were talking about. So what we have right here is we have Google fonts. And here's the cool thing about Google fonts. If you go to the frequently asked questions, is there a cost for any of these fonts? No, all Google fonts are open source. Open source means they are free for the world to use. Uh, typically, unless there's a legal uh, term that I don't know about, open source basically means you can do whatever you want with them. You can use them commercially. Uh, even include them within a product that's sold commercially. So these are free to use. Um, so there we go. So let's come back into our Google fonts right here and let's talk about these different types of fonts real quick. So we have serif, sans serif, display, handwriting, and monospace. Okay, so let's look at serif first. Serif fonts, now I don't know anything about Amiri Quran, so I'm not going to discuss that. But your typical serif font uh, is a font that has little, these little accent marks on the edges of most of the letters. These are used in a lot of magazines, newspapers, and it's an old typesetting uh, uh, trick. Supposedly, it makes the letters easier to read. Uh, I, I can't verify that, but that's what I understand about a serif font. It's supposed to make read readability a little bit easier. Um, now online you don't see serif fonts as much. I'm not going to say you don't see them, but you don't see them as, as much. Uh, actually right now if you look at Google, uh, you see right here we have, these are all what are called sans serif fonts, which sans serif means without serifs. And so that's what we see right here. And again, we can ignore these because I don't know really what's going on with these. I understand that that's Japanese, but I don't know what's going on here. But a sans serif font is a font that does not have serifs without serifs. All right. So you got a bunch of those to choose from. Uh, we have display fonts, which are kind of decorative. They're ones that don't really fall. I mean, they, they could be serif or sans serif. They could be um, they could be handwriting fonts, cursive fonts, but they typically are a little bit more decorative is the, what I would call them. And you find a lot of cool fonts in here. Um, that's a neat one. 
hadn't seen that one before. Fructor. Uh, then we have handwriting. These are a lot of your cursive fonts. Fuzzy bubbles. Um, where they come up with the names, I do not know. I actually just installed this dancing script. That's a pretty cool one. Uh, Pacifico. So we're going to go with Pacifico here. But before we do that, let's take a look. And we also have mono space fonts. Now I'm no expert on fonts, but from what I understand, oops, from what I understand about mono space, is that mono space is uh, the amount of space between from one letter to the next is consistent all the way across. So even if you have uh, a word with a lot of I's and L's, uh, which are more narrow letters, uh, this, if you, a, a seven letter word that has an I and an L is gonna take up the same amount of space as a seven letter word that has two M's in it, even though an M is typically we think of being a wider letter. So monospace is gonna be a consistent width no matter what. Uh, you, I think you really see that right here in this source code pro. Um, but I'm not a fan of those monospace most of the time, so I'm going to come back to handwriting. And uh, let's go ahead and go with this Pacifico right here. So if you wanted to download this for use, all that we have to do is download family. All right, so we download family, and then we show it in the folder, and you'll see I already downloaded a couple other ones there show in folder and there it is right there now you can right click on it or yeah you can right click on it uh, or you can just double click on it and go into the zip folder all right now I'm not going to go into details about unzipping but basically unzipping is or zipping a folder is a way of taking multiple files and just packaging them up into one download I give the uh, analogy of it's like putting everything into a suitcase then you have to open that suitcase and unpack Okay, so what we're going to do here is we can actually from the fonts, we don't even have to, literally we don't have to unzip it. We can just go in here, double click on it to open it, and I am using a PC. Uh, on a Mac, I think you just double click on the zip file itself and it automatically installs. And uh, so here it is. All we have to do is hit install. It takes about three seconds and it should be installed. So I'm going to close out of these, get back to... Here and now if you have the text tool activated already you probably wouldn't see it you'd have to close out of the text tool and reopen but if I come down into the P's I should see Pacifico right there there we go all right oh actually good this is uh, what I wanted to work with um, the problem that we run into now now that we have this font installed so there's part one how do you actually install that font and then number two, how would you work with this font uh, in, um, let me see right there, how would you work with this font on your project? Because the problem as I see it is you have a lot of these uh, letters are overlapping right there, which could give you some, uh, some bad results, especially if you're cutting out contours or engraving with them. Right, so we want to address that right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in real tight. And this is a handy tool that you have in, um, um, in vCarve. Uh, all right, so the first thing that we need to do is vCarve recognizes these as letters. It doesn't recognize them as shapes. So we need to basically turn these into vectors. Now, once you do that, you cannot modify the text anymore. You can't just highlight the text and, oh, I misspelled something. So you want to make sure that you've got your text the way you want it first. Okay? Then all you have to do is right click on it and convert to curves. That breaks apart these letters so they're no longer seen as letters. They're seen as vectors, as shapes. So now we're going to come into the interactive trim tool and I want to get rid of these overlaps right here so I have a nice seamless project. Now you really want to zoom in fairly tight on here because if you don't and you don't have your mouse in the right spot, I tried to mess up and I couldn't mess up. I'm just so perfect. Uh, there we go. All right, so I was able to mess up that time. Uh, I didn't want to get rid of that. Okay, and if you're zoomed out like that, then it can cause little problems. It can be tougher to grab what you want to grab. That's what I wanted to grab. I want to grab that and that, that and that, that and that. And if you're working with uh, many types, uh, if you're working with um, cursive fonts, this is probably something that you'll have to do. Come in there and clean that up. And there we go. Alrighty. So now, now I made this on a small uh, piece of material, but let's go ahead and run through the process of 
creating. I'm going to get rid of this profile because I was actually messing around with it before I recorded. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, so now what I want to do is I'm going to uh, let's do an engrave and see what happens here. So I've got a which engraving bit do I want to use? Let's use a let's give a V bit a shot. I've not used engra this engraving bit I don't think that much. So let's see what happens here. Uh, flat depth, I only want to go in about, let's say, a quarter of an, or an eighth of an inch. I'm just going to calculate that. Now, this is not intended to be a, that's interesting. Oh, oh, I know what it is. I still had that previous one on there. There we go. Um, so I needed to reset that preview, and then preview selected toolpath. And here we go. So we have our engraving, and it actually did a pretty decent job with it. All right. So what we looked at today was how to uh, download those free fonts, how to install those into vCarve. I believe you can do the same thing in Fusion, like I said, and then also how to break them apart and clean those up a little bit. Hope you got some use out of this. And if so, I would appreciate that like, comment, subscription below. Remember that that, that interaction with my channel, that's the currency that YouTube uses to decide whether or not I'm, uh, I'm worthy of being actually promoted. So with that, uh, you guys have a great day and let me know uh, what you'd like to see next.